as a response to the use of US and UK manufactured um, weapons, the Russian forces have uh, carried out a combined strike on one of the military industrial facilities in Ukraine. And this included the test of a novel uh, intermediate range a Russian missile system, a ballistic missile with a non-nuclear hypersonic um, payload was used. The test was carried out successfully. The objectives of the launch have been met. The further course of action will be determined based on the threats to the security of the Russian Federation. We believe that we have the right to use our weapons against military facilities of countries who allow their weapons to be used against ours. And in case of an escalation, we will act as decisively in a mirror fashion. The ruling elites of the countries are nurturing plans to use their military contingents against Russia should be warned. It is not Russia, but the United States, who have destroyed the system of international security. And they are trying to preserve their hegemony and stoking a global conflict. We have always preferred and we still prefer to resolve our disagreements and using peaceful means, but we are prepared for any scenario. And if anyone has any doubts, they shouldn't. There will always be a response. When choosing our measures to be used in response, such as the use of systems that was attested recently in Ukraine, will certainly include our warnings to civilians and to clear the zones that will be targeted. And we will certainly do this and in a transparent fashion. And we do not have any fears that it will reduce the effectiveness of those systems because there is no way to counteract a missile that flies at at 10 Mach, which is 2.5 to 3 kilometers per second. Existing anti-missile systems and the anti-missile systems deployed by the United States and Europe cannot intercept such missiles. It is impossible. And we believe it is a mistake on the part of the United States to destroy of the system that was established by the and missile treaty in 2019. We see that the United States and their allies are now considering and has successfully attested their capabilities to deploy advanced missile systems in different parts of the world. And their exercises routinely include the use of such weapons. Russia has unilaterally refused to deploy intermediate and small range missiles until we see similar um, weapons deployed by the United States in a region of the world. The use of the novel system, and the, which was essentially an operational test, was carried out in response to the decisions made by the United States and their allies. And the further actions will be considered and decided based on what we see uh, from them. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 21st, 2024. Let's get into it. You know, the biggest event probably in the last 40 years just happened, 
And it's not even on the front page of the Washington Post, or the New York Times, and the media is completely ignoring it. You do realize that the, for the first time in history, that an ICBM, intermediate range, has been used on the field of battle. Now, I wasn't tipped with nuclear weapons, thank God, but it could have very well been. So the target, from what I understand, was a, a, manufa or a, a plant that was uh, being used in Ukraine. Uh, it used to make um, nuclear weapons. And of course, the rumblings of Ukraine were that they were gonna kick up their nuclear weapons program uh, to uh, fight Russia. So I guess Russia decided, you know what, we, we wanna demonstrate to the West that's launched attack of missiles into our country, or the United States, uh, demonstrate to the United States that yeah, We've got, by the way, I don't, I'm not sure, I had never heard any intelligence that they had intermediate range nuclear missiles. <coughs> Excuse me. If you don't know the history, we had an intermediate range nuclear missile ban up until the Trump administration. And for whatever reason, somehow the deep state got to Trump and he lifted, he withdrew from that treaty. Now the Russians still obeyed the treaty all the way up until July of this past year. Okay, now they've always had the capability to make these intermediate range missiles. And according to Scott Ritter, they can make about six of them a month right now. So if they started in July, you figure they get six in July, August, September, October. So you, know, you do the math, four times six, 20, we got 24. So they're just getting started. They're just getting started. The next target, I guarantee you, will be probably Kiev. And they'll just take out the leadership. Zelensky, you're on borrowed time, baby. You are on borrowed time. If you keep, keep going along with the, the deep state, the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, I don't think people understand why I say warmongering Democrats. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get into it here in, in just a minute because I wanna talk about the three types of Democrats again, except I'm changing the categories just a little bit, okay? If you're a friend with a Democrat, you're not a friend with a good person. I'm just saying that. In fact, Garland Nixon came out. I couldn't believe it. Now, Garland Nixon is a lefty in certain kinds of ways. He came out and said, we should never have a Democrat in power ever again. I, I about fell out of my chair when Garland Nixon said that because I felt that way, you know, obviously, uh, since Barack Obama. Okay? I didn't know how evil Clinton was. Although Clinton, I mean, he played along to get along somewhat. Barack Obama corrupted the FBI and the Justice Department completely. And then, of course, when Trump got in there, they sabotaged him with all the Russia, Russia hoax and all of that. Let's just go through the news here real quick. So this is uh, Elon Musk. And, and we're going to get back to the Democrat theme on this video. OK, we're going to get back to that in just a minute. So but I, I thought this to start the video that says, seriously, if you want to know the real answer, it is because almost every one of them, once they become citizens, will vote Democrat. And this is from Elon Musk. Criminals vote overwhelmingly Democrat because they are the soft on crime party. That is a fact. Why do you think the Democrats let all of the rapists and the criminals out of jail? Their votes. Their votes. They're easy votes for the Democrats to get. They don't care about you and me. They don't care if, 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 if a rapist comes and rapes another woman. That's why I can't believe women even vote Democrat. Democrats let the rapists out so that they can rape more women. It's unbelievable. So this was in, in reply to Mike Solana. One thing I've been wondering, and please be patient, I'm new to the subject and really trying to learn why we are literally paying violent foreign criminals to live here. Breaking, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, assistant robbed and attacked by an illegal immigrant with five arrests. Let's watch that video. Poetic justice has been served. A smiling Brandon Samosa being led out of the Midtown South Precinct on West 35th Street this morning. Police say at about 2 a.m. Sunday, he robbed a 38-year-old woman in the hallway of her Hell's Kitchen apartment building. He allegedly grabbed her purse, cell phone, and bank cards and also performed a lewd act. 
The victim is a Manhattan assistant DA. She was not injured. Police traced her stolen cell phone to a hotel on West 45th Street, which led them to believe the suspect is a migrant, and they were able to track him down. Samosa was arrested just last night. Police say he was using drugs on the street and had stolen items with him. Police believe he is part of Trenda Aragua. That's the Venezuelan gang that has preyed on people in Times Square and Central Park. Samosa is facing a number of counts, including sexually motivated robbery and burglary. He also has six prior arrests, all from this year, on similar crimes. And he's believed to have arrived in the U.S. in February of 2023. In Lower Manhattan, Lauren Glassberg, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Woo, all right, so that was just a brief video there. So then this was I, I this is just interesting because uh, now this is Elon Musk parody and I'm 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 pretty sure this is Elon Musk because everything I read uh, on this account well he does it because it's funny it's a funny account but this was just a story and it's a short story about Elon Musk in quotes me I don't like vacations on two separate occasions when I decided to take a break from work my rockets exploded. <laughs> Another time, I was taking a trip for my honeymoon, and when I left, they replaced me as the CEO of X, later known as PayPal. I don't know if you knew that. He was the CEO. That's why he bought Twitter and named it X, because he wants to bring back PayPal in a different form with X. Okay, so eventually, you're going to be able to make payments with X. I'm not sure how far along he is on that project. I imagine it's a low priority. SpaceX obviously being the most important thing to Elon Musk right now. So uh, lastly, and probably the worst of them all, I had planned a two-week trip to South Africa and Brazil where I got malaria and was left bedridden fighting for my life. Moral of the story, I don't like vacations. I like rockets and free speech. Do you? Yeah, I like free speech. You know, that's another thing. We're, we're going to get on the Democrat theme. Democrats hate free speech. What do you think of that? You friend with a Democrat? Ask them, say, how come you want to shut me up? Huh? You Democrat lunatic, why do you want to shut me up? How come you can't sit here and have an honest debate with me? That's who a Democrat is. They would much rather throw you in jail for what you have to say as a hate speech or misinformation than have a conversation with you. That's who a Democrat is. We're going to get more into that. We're going to get more into that. So let's just read what the uh, uh, Russians had to say. Breaking, so it has begun. A warning shot from the Kremlin. The Russian Federation has just launched its first ICBM fitted with conventional warhead against Despro... I'm going to put, put it up above. I'm trying to try to pronounce this. Den Provik. Sources believe it was against NATO inst installments in Ukraine. Uh, like I said, Scott Ritter said it was a factory. Okay. Uh, early reports from the Trump transition scene say Gates uh, made this decision to withdraw on his own. So this is just a brief uh, Fox News video uh, talking about the Gates. If you didn't know, Gates uh, resigned from uh, becoming attorney general. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I want to show you this video first. You guys always seem to get all the breaking news right on America Report. So this brand new news breaking just moments ago on social media. And we're trying to see exactly what's going to happen here in Palm Beach, Florida at Mar-a-Lago, where the Trump transition team is working hard as this all just came out. I just got off the phone a short time ago with a member of the Trump transition team who is telling me they want to make something very clear here that they say former Representative Matt Gates came to this conclusion on his own to drop out. OK, so that just coming into our newsroom a short time ago. They say, though, in this post, according to the former president and now President-elect Trump, this, I greatly appreciate the recent efforts of Matt Gates in seeking approval to be attorney general. He was doing very well, but at the same time, did not want to be a distraction for this administration, for which he has much respect. Matt has a wonderful future, and I look forward to watching all of the great things he will do. But this comes, as Chad was explaining, after he seemed pretty Pretty optimistic just yesterday. I mean, it was just hours ago out there in Capitol Hill, walking around the Capitol Hill area and those hallways with a smile on his face, saying that he thought the meetings went well, but then posted that he had 
incredible support, but that the momentum was strong, but it was just becoming a big distraction. So distraction seems to be the name of the game here uh, as this attorney general pick kind of came to the surface. What's going to be next? I asked the Trump transition team about that. Well, since the news only broke about 20 minutes ago, they're still trying to figure out what's going to be next in terms of a short list and going through more and more interviews. Before Gates, though, we know Senator Mike Lee, Republican of Utah, he was a uh named as one of the top possible picks. Also, John Ratcliffe, a former director of national intelligence. Um, so there's some other names that are rolling into, new, into the newsroom. But back out here live, the Trump transition team telling Fox News moments ago that former Representative Matt Gates came to this conclusion on his own. They say it was not forced. It was just becoming such a huge distraction that he made this decision. So now back to the drawing board we, grow, we go, and that drawing board is at Mar-a-Lago, where the former president is working hard. All right, so there was that video. Kind of, kind of just helps explain things. Now, this isn't the end of the world. Gates not being attorney general is tragic. I mean, I, I think he would have been a fantastic attorney general. Sorry. You know, it's cold out here, and I'm still getting mosquitoes. <laughs> what the hell? I was going to tell you that it, the temperatures are dropped here in Florida. It's, it's actually kind of chilly right now. And that, you know, I don't have to worry about the bugs so much. So we're going to hopefully get some hiking videos at Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. Outdoors, shamelessly promote my channel. So we're going to be start getting some hiking videos. And imagine the ticks are starting to go in, too. So I can start doing some really wild trails, like hiking up into the Ocala National Forest. Wait, I'm sorry, I get off on a tangent. But anyway, so I wanted to talk about Gates just one second. Now, it doesn't matter, okay? He he could be the second in command over uh, over the um, you know to the attorney general, acting as a consultant, okay? And I'm sure Trump's going to find a place for him in his administration somewhere. But that's that's where I'm, I think he's probably going to end up. And so he, whoever becomes attorney general, Gates is going to be right there, hand in hand with him, helping him out. That's my that's my prediction. OK, so it's not a loss. It just means that we're going to have to get somebody else. A lot of people are saying that the um, what's the attorney general in Texas? So I'll put it up above. I can't remember. But I, I, I agree with the caller. I think he 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 needs to stay in Texas. You know, I don't want to see him pulled out because he he's really fought the, the tech. You understand Texas is the Bush monster. OK, Bush was a Democrat. OK, or a rhino, whatever you want to call him. OK, and he he littered the Texas uh, uh, you know, set it in the Texas House with rhinos or Democrats, okay, or, you know, Republicans posing as Democrats, all right? And so the Bush machine is still in place in Texas. And this attorney general has fought them tooth and nail, and I think he needs to stay there. We need Texas. If, we, if, if Republicans lose Texas, we're done as a party. We'll never, ever win an election ever again, especially with the Democrats cheating. Speaking of cheating, the county commissioner in Butler County, Pennsylvania, you understand, she, told the, she, she gave the, the double barrel to the, the uh, Supreme Court of Pennsylvania and told them, you know what, nobody goes to jail anymore, and if I violate the law and count these illegal ballots, screw you, Supreme Court. Come get me if you can. Well, Pennsylvania has a Democrat governor, and it's a lawless state. So she's right. She's not going to go to jail. That's a federal offense. But do you think the Justice Department's going to do anything about it? Or the FBI, who is just a Democrat machine up there? No. She's just going to continue to count illegal ballots, and nobody's going to do anything. That's my prediction. I'll be surprised. I mean, now, I think I heard a rumor that Charlie Kirk was going there. Maybe some Republicans will go and try to fight. But what are they going to do? They don't have the authority to arrest her, you know, unless you can get a sheriff in there some kind of way. Uh, and this is, hey, this is actually a video. This is more information on the strike. The Ukrainian city of Din, Din, Dinpro became the first city in human history to be struck by an intercontinental ballistic missile. It is a historic turning point, an intercontinental ballistic missile used not at a firing range, but against the city of a million people. Now, I'm, I'm assuming this video is real. I'm going to show it to you, but it, it shows the, uh, the missile hitting the target if this is, is, if this is actual video of, of, the, uh, of the strike.
Okay, it certainly does look like a ballistic missile. Now, I want you to see how fast everything's coming down. You know, I don't know if you've seen a hypersonic missile hit. A ballistic missile's going even faster. So the damage, I mean, just even if these things didn't have a payload, can you imagine the damage that would happen? I mean, when something comes in, it's like a, a meteor hitting the ground. You know, think of what damage a meteor does. You know, the, 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 you think a, a 2,000 pound bomb means a whole lot? Oh, hell no. Oh my God. Uh, this is just one more. I'm going to, because I, I, I still think this is the biggest story, but it says Ukrainian military officials claim that Russia fired a mid range ICBM into Ukraine. The report. It is a new missile, a nuclear-capable weapon carrying multiple warheads. We are the closest we have been to nuclear war since 1962. Putin just confirmed this is a new missile and claims that no system on Earth can stop Russia's new missiles and that the West made a mistake in launching U.S.-U.K. US, UK attack them, storm shadow missiles into Russia. By the way, U.K. is pretty all but declared war on Russia. U.K. is just a little tiny island. You realize that one nuke and that island's gone? Vaporized. I think the people at UK need to be doing something. Your, your government is out of control, UK. I mean, what is wrong, man? You, you, I, you realize how close to death you are? You think that the United States is going to go first on the target list of Russia? Oh, hell no. It, I, if I were Putin, the, my pecking order would be at Kiev, okay, and you don't even have to hit Kiev with, with the, they've actually got these um, gas bombs, which is almost the equivalent of a nuclear bomb, but they're conventional, okay? And if, if I was Russia, that might be my next escalation if we continue attack, uh, launching attackums and storm shadows against Russia. <clears throat> so so I, I would take, take, take out Kiev and, and certainly kill uh, Zelensky and his whole uh, administration. Then my, my next target might be Poland, perhaps, because uh, you could probably hit some military facilities there with some hypersonic missiles. You know, it, it maybe Lithuania. They, they, that barking dog's been talking a bunch of crap. Maybe, maybe hit Lithuania. So I'm just kind of going up the escalation ladder how I would go. But next on that list, I might hit, I would hit, I'd hit the UK for sure. And, uh, and then hopefully uh, that'll be the end of it. Uh, and, and so we're going to talk about the Democrats here in just a minute. But this was an article, and let's see if I can get it on here. Russia fires intercontinental ballistic missile in attack on Ukraine, Kiev says. And then let's read the text here. Hang on, another mosquito again. Ukraine's Air Force's Russia fired ICBM. U.S. officials say it was intermediate range. Ukraine fired Western weapons into Russia this week. Tensions rising in 33-month-old war. Kiev Reuters, Ukraine and Russia fired a new kind of missile at the city of Dimpro on Thursday. And while there was a debate over what kind, it appeared to be nuclear capable weapon that carried multiple warheads and a further escalation of the 33 month old war. Kiev said Russia used an intercontinental ballistic missile, a weapon designed for long distance nuclear strikes that never before has been used in war. Three U.S. officials said it was an intermediate range ballistic missile that had a small range. The only reason I read that was just to show you I've got multiple sources about exactly what, what took place and what it was. So, uh, uh, let's see. This sucks. Thank that POS rhinos in the Republican Senate for this. And this is on Matt Gates. And I, I won't read you the whole thing, but this is kind of what he said. He says, I had an excellent, excellent meetings with senators yesterday. I appreciate their thoughtful feedback and incredible support of so many. While the momentum was strong, it was clear that my confirmation was unfairly becoming a distraction to the official work of the Trump-Vance transition. There is no time to waste on a needlessly protracted Washington scuffle. Thus, I will be withdrawing my name from consideration to serve as Attorney General. Trump's DOJ must be a place and ready to go day one. And then, of course, it just goes on from there. Uh, that how he's committed to the Trump cause. Um, let's see, uh, this is Red Eagle politics. I just, okay, Republicans, maybe there's some cheating on the Republican side in the election. This is why I say the Democrats are pieces of crap. Okay, you got Democrat friends? Ask them why they're cheating on the election. Why are votes still taking place in Arizona? Why are votes still taking place in Pennsylvania? Why are votes still taking place in California? Ask a Democrat that. 
Do you realize here in Florida, our, our population in Florida is much greater than those states. Well, not California, but anyway. And we were done the night of the election. All of our votes were counted. You know why? Because Florida doesn't cheat that much. Okay? Not at all as far as I know. And in fact, we throw people in jail for cheating in the election. And here's a woman that's openly defying the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and she's not going to jail. So don't tell me the Democrats aren't the most corrupt people on the planet. Oh my God. So this is just him. There's an average of about 500 votes per day. Florida and Texas combined counted over 20 million votes within a few hours. There's no excuse for this third world country level stuff. And then he's got a graphic here and it is showing that Kamala Harris's numbers keep going up in Lake County. Uh, unbelievable. And then uh, this is Ron Paul. I just wanted to read this from here. It says 1913. And this is just a little historical reference. And then we're going to get into talking about Democrats. 1913, the year that led to today's economic torture. Both the income tax and the Fed Federal Reserve were created that year by Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat. A Democrat. Okay? Every evil that takes place in the United States is done by a Democrat. I want you to understand that. Okay. Income tax made everyone's earnings in the, prop the property of the government first. What the government allows people to keep is, is then re relentlessly stolen by the Fed's inflation. So you see how they're getting you on both sides of the candle. They're getting you with inflation and they're getting you with uh, taxes. And that's all Democrat. I mean, that's another thing. Isn't it surprising how Democrats are for taxes? I mean, Trump's going to cut taxes. You do understand that. So anybody that votes Democrat wants their taxes to go up. Now, if you're on welfare, I suppose you want to, you want to tax your neighbors so that you can get the money, I guess. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. So... Uh, this is, uh, this is Jim Jordan. Um, let's listen to what he, he, I think he's talking, he might be talking about Gates here. Let's, let's see, uh, from One America News, let's watch that video. A MAGA mandate. We want to make they, America great again. Yeah, they want, a, they want an attitude in their government that actually says that the people working for them, the taxpayers, are actually serving we the people, we the taxpayers, <laughs> not being weaponized, not being politicized, but serving the t a leaner, meaner, efficient government, not meaner, but a leaner government, more efficient government, which, which of course, uh, Elon Musk and, and, and uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy are working on. But also these agencies run by the kind of people who have the attitude they voted for, the American people voted for on election day. And that's why I like the picks President Trump is putting forward nominating for these uh, these key federal agencies. Well, I got a lot of questions for you because it's been a while since you were on, so let's just go down the row. The first one, of course, Matt Gates. He's a friend of yours, friend of mine. I think he'd make an amazing AG because we know he has been a firebrand. I mean, he's taken on not just the establishment lefties, but even some of the establishment rhinos in that city y'all work in. And I think if he gets into the DOJ, Look out, heads are gonna roll. And we have seen so much corruption, Jim. It's about time somebody cleans up the DOJ. No, exactly. We know that if Matt Gates is running the Department of Justice, we're not gonna have the, the Justice Department investigating moms and dads who go to the school board meetings to look out, you know, to, to see what's going on in their kids, uh, in their child's school. We know that uh, it, the FBI, who put together a memorandum in the, in the Richmond field office, which said if you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist. We know that's not going to happen. And maybe if we have the right kind of guy at the at the Justice Department, Americans can learn who planted the pipe bombs on January 6th, yes. who leaked the Dobbs opinion, and who put cocaine at the White House. It'd Amen. be nice to know answers to those questions. And so, again, I think President Trump's pick for the Justice Department and all these other agencies bring the attitude that the American people voted in an overwhelming way for President Trump, bring that attitude to work uh, in the government. The recess appointment is typically only used after after a while, and and you got someone that uh, that that sh that should be in and is just not being brought up, or we're we're into this. So I hope the regular process works. I mean, we have a constitution. Let's follow. The president gets to to name who he wants for these key positions, and then the Senate, it, you know, they provide advice and consent, and they confirm the the, the nominee. Uh, I hope that that's how it works. But if it doesn't, I think all options should be on the table for accomplishing what the American people voted for yes. on November 5th. 
So that that to me is 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 the key. But I would much prefer we do it the normal way, and the Senate goes through, does what they do in the respective committees, goes to the Senate floor, and you have the vote up or down. Hearing you guys have been really going after FEMA after it was revealed by a whistleblower that some of their middle management, possibly even upper management, was fine with their field caseworkers in Florida and North Carolina, the hardest hit communities walking past homes that had Trump flags or signs on them. Roll this clip with Jim Grilliner. There's 13 people on this text message. Have you talked to all 13 of those individuals? This in, uh, incident is under investigation. That's not what I asked Office. you. I know it's under investigation, and we know how investigations work when it's done inside the agency. It takes forever. I'm asking, did you talk to the 13 people on this best practices Text message. The Office of Professional Responsibility has taken this and they are following appropriate protocol to investigate. Is the Inspector General looking at it as well? And I have asked the Inspector General to take a look at this. I any idea when, any idea when they're going to talk to these 13 people since you have it? Have you talked to, how about you personally? Have you talked to any of these 13 people? I have not talked to them you personally. You have not talked to I have an entire team that focuses on this investigation and that's what they're doing. And there is the infamous text messages that uh, the one gal, Miss Washington, I believe is her last name, sent to her teams, and there were 13 other team leaders on that, and it says right there, I mean, you know, take a towel, take breaks, get some water, take a break, and oh, by the way, avoid homes advertising Trump. Right. Jim, tell right. me heads are gonna roll for this. Well, but th that text message, the, the, I think the key takeaway is, it seemed like it was just commonplace, right. common knowledge. Oh, make sure you don't die because you're dehydrated. Make sure you take a towel because you're out walking and it's hot. And, and oh, of course, make sure you skip the Trump houses, the houses with a Trump sign on their lawn. So I mean, a matter of fact, because remember that, that the director of FEMA said that this was an isolated incident and is wrong, it's reprehensible. Sure. And of course, Ms. Washington, who sent the text message, she says, no, this is com basic common, common practice. I seem to, it sure looks like the text message, the nature of the text message supports that it's a classic example, a textbook example of government being weaponized against the very people they're supposed to serve. Okay, there was that. And then of course, Charlie Kirk chimed in. Senator Tommy Tuberville, I told you he was a mini me. He's a McConnell mini me. McConnell is one of the most corrupt sons of bitches that ever existed. He's a Democrat. I don't know how he keeps getting elected, and I certainly don't know how he became Senate Majority Leader. Okay, but uh, Tom or Tom Tumberville is just a mini-me of McConnell. Now, is he going to be just as bad? Probably. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be hard to outdo the turtle. You know, the turtle is one evil son of a gun. Tumberville, I don't know yet. I haven't determined if he's pure evil or not. Just threw down the gauntlet, defending uh, uh, d defending by name Matt Gates, Pete Hegleth and RFK Jr. from the Senate floor, all while standing in front of a sign that reads, number of Democrats who voted against Biden's 21 cabinet nominees, zero. A majority of voters decided that the America First agenda championed by Donald Trump and J.D. Vance is the playbook for American greatness. As a part of that playbook, President Trump has already put together a strong, very strong list of qualified cabinet members. At defense, he's tapped Peace Head Sith, a veteran who served two tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, is Ivy League educated businessman background. That's what we need in the Pentagon right now to restore order and our finances. At HHS, he's assigned Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who has single handedly brought attention to the many public health crises facing Americans. He's Harvard educated, has authored multiple books, and has a four decade career in public health and environmental law. And an attorney general, he's nominated Matt Gates, a qualified attorney who has served in Congress for nearly a decade. Matt Gates has been a warrior for the Constitution on the Judiciary Committee and has exposed the weaponization of the justice system of the DOJ. Ask yourself, why are my Democratic colleagues, the media, and the establishment losing their minds over these highly qualified nominees? It's because of the dislike of President Trump, the American First Agenda, and nearly 80 million Americans who voted to send him back to the White House. It's obvious. 
Panic has set in at the DOJ, the intelligence community, and the entire D.C. swamp. They're finding out, as Barack Obama said, that elections have consequences. This is the way. Okay. So, um, all right. I guess that we'll cut it off right there. Let's see if we got... Oh, yeah. This, this, this is uh, Cash Patel. I, I do like Cash Patel. I love the guy, man. I think uh, a lot of people are promoting him for director of the FBI. That would be poetic justice, wouldn't it? <laughs> I would love to see him in there. I don't know, though. He would face the same Senate. But like I told you, Trump can appoint somebody for 211 days and then reappoint him for another 211 days. So if we got Cash Patel in there, he could clean up the FBI whether the Senate confirms him or not. I keep pointing that out. But anyway, so this man knows what he says and understands what needs to be done. Only cash. The number one hashing on X is only cash. Uh, by the way, that, isn't that cool? Everybody's saying only cash. We need Cash Patel as director of the FBI. And this is a video of Cash Patel. If, if you don't know who he is, this is him talking. We need a 24-7 declassification office. Whatever you want to call it. Transparency, truth, whatever. I don't care. Sits in the White House reports directly to you, and you take incoming from the United States of America. I want JFK. I want the 9-11 files. I want this. I want that. All the FBI, and this is a tool, this is something we didn't cover. <clears throat> what the deep state uses the most to cover up their corruption is an illegal application of the classification system. Remember the Lovebirds text from, this is a beauty, the Lovebirds text from FBI, DOJ land, Russiagate, Strzok and Page were texting each other. Who They were running the Russiagate investigation against Trump. They were the head of the counterintelligence unit at the FBI. And they're having an extramarital affair together. Can't make this stuff up. They're sending each other e texts about how much they hate Trump and are going to create an insurance policy to stop Trump. Then we finally find those text messages. You know what the FBI and DOJ do for like a year? Redact them. To congressional investigators and congressional men and women running the oversight of their invest of their agency that's just one example but it gets even better here's the deep state full circle just last week do you know what Strzok and page received from the department of justice what a 1.5 million payout to settle a lawsuit that Strzok and page brought for the improper disclosure of their personal text messages on fbi phones and the doj just rewarded them they broke the law. They broke the chain of command. They broke every regulation there is in the FBI. They weaponized the system of justice against a political target they hated. We found those text messages, and we got them declassified finally in full when I became deputy director of national intelligence. And the world has now seen them, and they can read them. And that's the best form of transparency. That's why I want this 24-7 declassification office. Don't have me regurgitate it to you. Read it. Get the documents. Get the files. Get the memos. But the deep state came full circle and gave these guys a payday for rigging a presidential election and breaking the law. So now you know what happens. That's step one. Step two, get America the truth. And that's what that office would do. It's the motherfucking DRE. Dr. Dre, motherfucker. You know I'm mobbing with the DOW. All right, so that was Cash Patel. Uh, and then, of course, this goes back to the, the, the main story here. Uh, this is Douglas McGregor, and this was a, a, a somewhat old post, and we're, we're going to stop right here. It says, breaking, Ukraine fires British storm shadow missiles into Russia. And, come on, Doug. The U.K. fired the missiles into Russia. You know, I mean, okay, Ukraine pushed the button. Okay, but developing. The UK has previously allowed Ukraine to use Storm Shadow cruise missiles within its own territory, but for, for several but for several months. The government has been urging the United States to grant permission for their use against targets in Russia. All right, so there you go. Let's see. Oh, this was good. Um yeah, this was, uh, I think I put this in the last video, but I'll put it up again. Only 60 days of nuclear chicken, our, our 60 days of nuclear chicken have begun. Expectation of peace talks after Donald Trump's inauguration is pushing all sides of the Ukraine war to escalate with British and American missiles attacking fresh risk. And then this was uh, Insurrection Bobby. I'm sorry, I, I keep going, but these are all good posts. Per the New York Times, Democracy Ford is planning the Trump 
resistance. They have 800 lawyers in 280 organizations, 600 priority legal threats identified, and dozens of lawsuits already prepared. The project, this project to stop Trump is called Democracy 2025. They have spent the last two years working on this, and they have begun preparing legislation to challenge every single regulation Donald Trump puts forward. And they are currently, currently in the process of interviewing plaintiffs that will have legal standing. Prominent members involved in this are Mark Elias, Ron Klein, former chief of staff to Biden. There you go. We'll get a video on the way back. Let's talk about Democrats. Video is bouncing around a bit. I got to keep it on UHD 30 because the lighting is so bad right now. I'm going to try to walk him, push the basket, and talk all at the same time. <laughs> this ain't going to be easy. There he is. The boss dog. Now let's talk about Democrats. All right, if you've watched my previous videos, I've always told you that there's three types of Democrats. It's getting dark on me. That's why I gotta, gotta get going here. Is uh, you've got your meat puppet Democrats. I'd say that's probably the majority of Democrats. Dumber than a bag of stones. Don't understand that everything they're voting for. They're voting for evil people who wanna raise their taxes and destroy the United States. That's your meat puppet Democrat. They don't know better. They just vote because they think that the Democrats are doing something for them when all they're doing is destroying them. Then you got what I call your satanic demonic Democrat. That's my new category. So those are, those are a lot of your senators and representatives that are up in Congress. You know, some, I think some of them are demonic and some of them are satanic for sure. And then you've got your totalitarian Democrat who just wants to rule over you. They don't want you to have free speech. They don't want you, they don't respect the U.S. Constitution. They just as soon, soon throw you in a concentration camp and bankrupt you, take everything you got. They don't care if you live or die. That's your totalitarian Democrat. Now, you gotta brush across all three categories of Democrats. They're all liars. Every single Democrat is a liar. They'll lie to your face, they'll lie about everything. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. So let's, let's just take some examples of Democrats and what they've done just in the last four years. Okay, the first thing was the, the, the one that got me, uh, oh man, I tell you, I, I lost it. I lost it when they pulled out of Afghanistan and killed 13 American soldiers. And then you saw Biden, you know, I think he, I don't know if that was a funeral. Remember him checking and just checking his watch, like what the hell am I here for? He didn't care about those 13 people that died. I don't even think he ever called any of those uh, families to say, you know, I'm sorry that they got killed. I was just trying, yeah, I mean, he could have just apologized. and said, look, I was trying to get us out of Afghanistan. I didn't know that the generals that I have around me, the Democrat generals, would be so stupid as to give up Bagram Air Force Base and, and then bring it over there and get everybody killed. They didn't care. The generals didn't care. That's the thing that blows my mind. That's what's got me so worried. So then, uh, I mean, look at look at what they've done. They brought in 30 million illegal immigrants. They're basically changing the demographic of the United States completely. And they did it with yours and my tax money. That's what's so amazing. All these NGOs, you know, that, that are flying illegal immigrants all over the country, those are uh, your, your tax dollars. And the Democrats, uh, Mallorcas, that traitor, he's just going right along with it. And what blows my mind, see, that this is where I get back to the meat puppet Democrats, okay? The blacks still voted, uh, the majority of them voted Democrat, even though they've been replaced now by illegal immigrants that are making more money off of the government than they are. So any blacks on welfare, you're getting chump changed, man. That illegal immigrant next door is getting a lot more than you are at least until Trump gets, if Trump gets in, I, you know, so why? That's what blows my mind. So we can so see how we, we're going full rotation, the meat puppet Democrats, and especially some of the poor people or these, uh, these women, more meat puppet Democrats. Abortion was an issue for them. And you heard me talk about abortion many, many times on my channel. It's freely available in every state across the United States. And in fact, after what Trump did, it actually became even more freely available. 
I mean, I don't know why that's such. And then, of course, in states like Alabama or maybe Mississippi, I can't remember which one, they got really strict abortion laws. All you got to do is drive to another state. <laughs> you can go to California, pop that baby out the womb, wrap the umbilical cord right around its head and pop its little head off. They don't care in California. So go to California and make a vacation out of it. Go there and kill your baby. That's, I mean, why, don't see where this is. why is that even an issue for the Democrat women? I don't get it. And of course the pill, the portion pill is still freely available. I don't agree with any of this. And in fact, from what I understand, that abortion pill da does some damage to the woman's body. And then, you know, but the thing that gets me, and we did this in one video, was the liberal women went along with the, uh, with the mandate, the, uh, the vaccine mandate. Remember that my body, my choice, my body, my choice. And they, you know, they were making the big issue about the fact that, you know, abortion should be freely available all the way up to the birth of the baby. They kept saying, my body, my choice. But then when they government, the Democrat, Democrats forced a vaccine mandate, a lot of people lost their jobs over that. A lot of people didn't want to get it. And what was amazing to me, because I experienced it firsthand, was how many medical professionals did not get the jab. Now, what did they know that you and I didn't know? because I was in a hospital for three months in Charlottesville, Virginia, with a broken neck. And all the nurses, I, I mean, all, almost all the older nurses had quit because they wouldn't get the jab. So I had these young college students. God, if I wasn't in so much pain, they were attractive anyway. But anyway, I couldn't, I certainly wasn't thinking about that. But uh, I mean, certain things don't work no more. But anyway, so uh, I'm getting a little too personal here. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so I had all these college students and they didn't know what the hell they were doing because all the nurses had quit and the Democrats didn't care. You think they care about how the patients are treated if they're going to, you know, put a vaccine mandate on the women to, to, uh, or the nurses and, and they let them all quit? By the way, I, I know people complain. You're going to hear the crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> we're getting into the leafy area. Maybe I'll wait till we get, let, let me get through the leafy area and then We'll cut the video back on here in just a minute. All right, getting back to Democrats. Think about it. Think about how evil this is. Because uh, I don't know if you've been following the Capitol Hill story that uh, a couple of the women up on Capitol Hill said that they don't want that trans, trans person, the guy, in the women's bathroom. Amazing how Congress can make a big deal about it, but Democrats across the United States, especially in Democrat cities and towns, they want men in women's bathrooms. Sorry, I gotta adjust them. Can you believe that? What, what woman goes along with that? Why would you vote for men in your bathroom? For that matter, why do women vote to have men in women's sports? Riddle me that, Batman. I'm telling you, the Democrats are either, they're either stupid or evil or satanic. And so, you know, we started the video with the theme because I was very upset when Biden approved sending the attackums. And this is why I say it's satanic. You do understand, I honestly feel that the deep state around Biden would rather destroy the world than give up their power. How else do you explain it? I mean, what's Russia got to do? I mean, you know, like I said, the, the fuel air munition would be next on the list. How far are the Democrats gonna push the Russians to declare nuclear war? We are a hair trigger away from all dying. That's satanic, man, that's, that's demonic. You know Satan wants to destroy the world. Not all you religious people out there. Oh no, the Democrats aren't satanic. They're not demonic. Why would you wanna destroy the world? Unless you're satanic or demonic, okay? It's one thing to have power and give it up, okay? You know, uh, I mean, no big deal. They're already made, they're all millionaires. They've stolen so much now, I guess they're afraid that, you know, maybe a, a revamped Justice Department or maybe a revamped FBI might throw them all in prison, which is where they need to go. But I doubt it. I think Trump just wants to get in there, clean up, uh, fire a whole bunch of bureaucrats 
and most of them can just retire. You understand that? They would rather destroy the world than give up their power. Those are also the totalitarian Democrats. So I guess you could you could combine totalitarian, satanic, and demonic all in, in, you know all together. So unbelievable. So you know when you're out with your Democrat friends, why don't you ask them about these things? How can you be around these people? I can't be around them. I can't. I, you know, if if if, you, if a Democrat would engage me in an argument, I might hang out with them. I would love to argue some of these things. I don't. I think these positions are indefensible. I think they're all indefensible. That's why they don't want to have an intelligent conversation, and that's why they hate free speech. They also hate the Second Amendment. Do you understand that Democrats want to take all your guns away? Who would vote for such a thing? Why would you want the, the government to be the only uh, entity that has weapons? And w I would think that women, most of all, because I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. You got a big dude who pumps iron and lifts weights and he goes up a little against a petite little woman. I don't care if she knows karate like you see in the movies. He's going to beat the crap out of her. The only thing that equalizes her to him would be a gun. Now, I think you could also go with the burner or a pepper spray or something like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, even a drug addict man is going to beat up most women, no problem. Now, I couldn't. A woman probably beat me up. <laughs> so I could, at least I can throw that out, right? I mean, but still. So why would a woman vote to give up guns that the Democrats are going to take away from them. And I say women, I'm, I'm thinking also of, of uh, you know, some of these uh, uh, petite guys, you know. Or in my, in my case, if you're just old and crippled, you know, the only way that I can protect myself is if I'm armed. I can't, I can't fight some young dude. He beat the, uh, well, I can't even fight a young woman. <laughs> you know, but, but still, I mean, you know, the only way I can protect myself is, is if I've got something that says, don't, don't come here, you know, and how are you gonna protect your, your house? And look at what the Democrats did with January 6th. All lies. I told you way back then that that was a PSYOP. Okay, they let those people into the Capitol building. Yeah, there was some violent people there. But, and what did they do? They jailed all of their, all those people for no reason. We got grandmothers in jail for walking into the Capitol building. They pose no threat to anybody. And they've been in jail for four years. Democrats don't care. They don't care at all. That's satanic, man. Look at what they tried to do to Trump. They tried to kill him twice. Okay. I mean, tried to kill him twice. And then uh, they tried to throw him in jail. They tried to bankrupt him. They, uh, they, they dragged him through the court system. Uh, do you think that, I mean, honestly, do you think Trump would have done that to a, a Democrat opponent? Did he do it to Joe Biden back in 2020? And look at what happened in 2020. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. That was the biggest rigged election in the history of the United States. That's just my opinion. I mean, and, and there was all kinds of cases that were brought. And the only reason, and of course the Democrats would go, there were 60, 60 cases that they brought. And they, you know, the, the, the courts were too chicken to hear them. And they said they had no standing. Not one court ever heard a case that was brought to them. They all said that no standing, which just means, okay, we're, we're not even gonna look at it. So if there was evidence, if you watch the Sesson Souza's, uh, what is it, 3,000 mules or whatever it was, I can't remember where he shows how they cheated. There's been a lot of documentaries about that election that show you what, what really took place during and happened during this election. Why would you oppose? Here's another thing. Democrat, ask a Democrat this. Why would you oppose paper ballots and same day counting? Unless you wanted to cheat. That's the only explanation. Why would you bring 30 million illegal immigrants into the country? So that they can vote. Let the criminals vote. But think about this now. Okay, Democrats flew that murderous bastard from New York down to Atlanta, and the guy went out, choked a 12-year-old girl to death and raped her. And, and, and the, by the way, in the Democrat state now, or Democrat city, I guess, Atlanta, 
He just got life in prison. That means we're gonna take care of this bastard for the rest of our lives, an illegal immigrant. Here illegally, killed a young 12-year-old girl. That dude should have been hung in a town square like in the old wild west or put in a firing squad and make it an example of. Don't tell me he shouldn't. Anybody rapes a 12-year-old girl and chokes her to death. Oh my God, and, we, and we're gonna pay for his, uh, his life? Senate in prison? That's who Democrats are. If anybody deserved the death penalty, it was that dude right there. All right, it's getting too dark. I think I made my point, didn't I? All Democrats are evil, man. All Democrats. If you got a friend who's a Democrat, I want you to just say something to them. Anything. Just bring up one of the topics that I just talked about. Any one of them. And see how they scramble to run away from it. Oh, I don't want to alienate my Democrat friends. Your Democrat, a Democrat is not your friend. They're against the United States. They would just as soon see the United States burnt to the ground. They would just as soon see your family in a concentration camp. That's who the Democrats are. Peace out and stay free. Forgot one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna cut the video off here. I want you to remember what Democrats called you, okay? Because before my Democrat wife divorced me, her sister called me a racist. I took great offense to that. I, I served, I've been led by black men, did a great job, wonderful human beings. I have many black friends and call me a racist. How many Democrats have called you a racist? How many Democrats have called you a white supremacist? These are, these are evil terms. How many Democrats have called you a Nazi? Huh? Do you realize what a Nazi is? Are you gonna, are you gonna lead up the concentration camp and throw Jewish bodies into a, a furnace? A Democrat would gladly do it. They would gladly, they, they take great glee burning bodies. The, Gem the Democrats are committing a genocide with Israel. They're supporting a the genocide. Genocide Joe, that's what I call him. Genocide Joe. You know how many Palestinians, and, and Lebanon too. Democrats are supporting that. They're giving Israel everything they need to kill as many people as possible. I know because I see the burning bodies. I have to watch all of that because I have to pay attention to Telegram. But that's another thing. Ask a Democrat where they get their news. This, this goes back to the meat puppet status. They're still watching the mainstream media or the legacy media, I guess I should call it. Look, I think it's good. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see me at this point. It just infuriates me. Think of all the names and now you say, well, they didn't mean to call me a racist. They didn't mean to call me a white supremacist. Of course they did, they meant it. That's what they think of you and me. That's what a Democrat is, man. Judge a book by its cover, okay? Judge a book by its cover. If they're gonna label you, and look at what they called uh, uh, Trump. You know, of course, then he has a friendly meeting with Biden after the fact, they called him a Nazi. They called him all kinds of names. I love it when Trump says, he says, I stand between you and them. He means it. Look at, I mean, look at all the names they called Trump. And people believed it. All right. Anyway, I know it's too dark now. Whew. Boy, I'm hoping it as fast as I can. Getting back, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like right now. Oh man, I hope there's, there are bear in here. Thought I saw something moving, but you know, the dark kind of plays tricks on your eyes. Crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Forgot one other thing about a Democrat. And it's one of, my, one of my favorite channels is the liberal hive mind. Because that's what the Democrats are. They are a hive mind. They are the Borg. If you ever watch Star Trek, go back and watch the Borg. Do you notice how Democrats, when, when if anything comes up to a vote in Congress, you might have some Republicans that will vote a certain way, some will vote another way. All Democrats vote together. They are the Borg. They have no minds of their own. They go along with whatever Nancy Pelosi puts in front of them, they'll vote for it, okay? They are, the, they are a hive mind. I mean, can you imagine being a part of a hive mind? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I consider myself an independent thinker. 
if a Republican says something extremely stupid or does something really bad, I'm going to call them out for it. But you know, a Democrat, they're not going to say anything bad about a Democrat. And they're always going to vote with whatever the party tells them to do. Just let's take an example. Look at what they did to Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Okay, the Democrats don't care about primaries. They don't care about elections. They, uh, that was a coup that took Biden out. I had a hard time seeing it. <laughs> I might walk into a tree here. But anyway, so, uh, you know, they, they took Biden right out of the picture. Uh, and the Democrat, you know, if you have a Democrat friend, they're like, well, it was a good idea. He was just a crusty old man. Well, well ask him. I'd say, well, don't you think you should have had a primary instead of just appointing Kamala Harris, queen of the Democrat Party? Look at what Hillary. They appointed Hillary queen of the Democrat Party, and they just took Bernie right out of the picture. What did Bernie do? He went right along with it. And so, I mean, Bernie's kind of independent. More or less, he's a... He's a He's certainly a Marxist communist. He, he doesn't uh, doesn't hold it back. At least he's honest about it. But uh, he, he went right along with the Democrat machine. So, I mean, the Democrat machine, they, they just really want to be ruled. They don't want to actually have to think about things. They just want someone to tell them what to do, how to vote, and what to say. That's what a Democrat is. They're a hive mind. Boy, I really can't see now. Anyway, I keep thinking of things. I want you to also understand what the Democrats have done to you and me and to the United States. Do you realize we are now the most hated country on the planet all the way around the world? Do you know that there's been UN Security Council resolutions where every single country in the world voted one way and the United States vetoed it because we have veto power on the Security Council. Can you imagine? Think of, think of the world population. What are we up to now? How many billions of people live in the world? We've only got 300 million here in the United States. So 300 million just overrode, I don't know, 9 billion people or something. And Democrats don't care that they're authoritarians. Also, I didn't talk about the South China Sea. What's going on there? You realize the Democrats just put up a military base and they're working with Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan in an alliance against China. And China just claimed an island in there, sent in a bunch of ships. So they want war with China too. So not only do, are they trying to get us into a nuclear war with Russia to destroy the world, if that don't work, they'll try to get us into a nuclear war with China. I don't know, the dog just stopped. Good, I can, I won't walk into a tree now. So, I mean, I just want you to understand you are hated. Go anywhere in the world and people are going to look at you sideways and they're going to say, that's an American. You might get the crap beat out of you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, I know that you're pretty well protected if you've got money and you're in a, a tourist group. And most people in the world will probably leave you alone. But there's a lot of places now that you're not going to be able to go. The other thing is Australia. We have put intermediate range nuclear missiles in Australia. So Australia, man... When you, when we go up, you go up. That's what the, and that, and that's a direct threat to China. So look at what they're trying to pick. They, you know, Trump almost had North Korea give up their nuclear weapons. Almost. What did the Democrats do? They pissed them off so bad that they built as many nuclear weapons as they could. Okay. So now you got, you got North Korea pissed off. You got China pissed off. You got Russia pissed off. You got the whole world hates the United States. All of the Middle East is watching the genocide taking place in Lebanon and Gaza. And trust me now, they hate America more than anything. And then if that ain't bad enough, the Democrats want a war with Iran. Do you see what, you see how, it's called uh, gunboat diplomacy. Okay, wouldn't it be nice if we could just get along with the other people in the world rather than threatening them and sanctioning them and dropping bombs on them and everything else? But that's who Democrats are. They don't know how to be a diplomat. That requires empathy. That requires negotiation. That requires a mutual agreement where the two of you can arrive on something that you both care about 
you might have to give up some things that you didn't want to give up. But no, Democrats, the, the authoritarian Democrats, they, they just want to bomb you into submission. They want to kill you. And trust me, if you're if you, if you going to kill a million people in Iraq, they wouldn't hesitate to kill you and me. That's who a Democrat is. Even though it's getting dark, I wanted to get you that view. Isn't that beautiful? Remember the first star? I wish upon my star tonight. I can't remember. Starlight, star bright. I wish upon my star tonight. That's the first star. No moon, unfortunately. <laughs> so by the time I get back to the car, I, I, don't, I hope I don't trip on the way. All right, one last view. Check that out. Isn't that cool?